just sort of stood around. And if you'll notice, some of them left him. Okay? There is action required as we pursue God's will for our lives. All right? Understand that you will run into the strong man. David could have said, I'm tired. All right? Think about David and Goliath. Let's just go there for a moment here. He got tired of the Philistines always, always, always crushing and being negative and making fun and hurting his people. And at some point he got done with this. He said, who are these? And especially this uncircumcised Philistine Goliath. Who does he think he is? And so he said, I'm going to take his head off. And so he went out and he pursued him. David attacked them. All right? You need to begin to pursue what is rightfully yours in Jesus. Amen. Because you see, if you think healing and finances and happiness is just going to stick to you like flies to glue, it's not going to work that way. The enemy and in this world, there's going to be so many opportunities to see all of these things run away. But you need to begin to take your stand and say, that is mine in Jesus' name. Okay. Um, the next step in your life might involve sacrifice, all right? Ga David gave his time and his energy, and yet another 200 men left him. That can't be fun. How did, what did David sacrifice then? He was tired. Sometimes it doesn't feel good doing what God's called you to do. Sometimes I got, and I commend patience. I don't know if I could have did it today. She was out partying all night. No, she wasn't. She was out with her husband, and they got in really late. And she said, I came to church, and I'm real tired. But you know what? That's just a real honest truth. But you know what? God will restore her strength, and God will bless her. If she went home today with one little nugget that helped her through the week, it's all worth it. It's not always going to be easy being a Christian. It's not always going to be a cakewalk. There's going to have to be some oomph to what you do. You're going to have to decide to say, this is who I am. And if this is who I am, then I'm going to live this, I'm going to speak it, and I'm going to do it. All right? Focus on the promise. The Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. What does that tell you? The world is always going to be after you. It doesn't even sound fun to talk like that. But the bottom line is you're going against the current. Why did we have a frustrating time in our time away? Because we were going against the current. Right? If you're Canadian and you're used to not being in a room like this, all clouded with cigarette smoke, and you're going to go there, you're going to get a headache. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to have opportunity to be bitter and murmur and complain. But we had to retreat from that and say, wait a second here. We're not going to change this, but we can change our environment. You can change your environment. You can change what comes out of your mouth. Amen? Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to start to get some payback. Praise God. Uh, Matthew 14, verse 22. Let's go there. Matthew 14, 22. I think you're going to like this. <clears throat> you guys are probably all looking for coffee. I'm sorry, I forgot that. Next week. Matthew 14, 22. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And it says, And immediately Jesus made His disciples get into the boat and go to the other side and he sent the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up to the mountain to be by himself to pray and when evening came he was alone there but the boat was now in the middle of the sea tossed by the waves for the wind was contrary the wind will be contrary in your life and in the fourth watch of the night Jesus went to them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a ghost and they cried out for fear what do you cry out with? Do you cry out the scripture? Do you cry out in prayer? Do you cry out victory? Or do you cry out in fear? And Jesus said, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to the water. And Jesus said, Come. Now, you know what? We all whine and complain because Peter went out onto the water and eventually he looked at the storm and the waves and the wind and he started to sink. But listen, let's give him credit for just a moment here. He at least had the guts to climb out of the boat. How many know the rest of the disciples stayed in the boat? Jesus was out in the water, and instead the guys were on the boat going, well, there's big waves, and there's maybe sharks, and there's stuff, and it's wet, and we're tired, and it's the middle of the night, and we just really would rather, Lord Jesus, that you spoon feed us. But Peter said, I'll go. Jesus, can I come? And so at the word of Christ, he stepped out of the boat and did. But how many know the wind didn't stop? The waves, if anything, it increased. His attack increased. You shouldn't be surprised when it seems like when you start to pursue God that there's a greater attack on your life. Or you could be like the boat people. And you know what they got? 
seasick. That's it. But Peter went out, and he started to walk on the water. And if that's not a feat, I don't know what is. But then we see that when he started to know, when he got his eyes off Jesus, which we can do, but instead we pick on this guy. He got his eyes off Jesus, and he started to sink. But when he cried out to Jesus, immediately Jesus grabbed him and said, I'm here. I'm right here. It's I. Don't be afraid. You need to understand that. Do not let your setbacks stop you. Do not let them become an anchor or a roadblock in your life. Instead, to consider Jesus and continue to pursue Him. All right? Begin to walk on the water. You know what? Here, here's the deal. And you got, I've been thinking about this all week. I see these people. There was homeless people, people with signs. One guy said, I need a beer. Why lie? And he had a cap there and people were throwing quarters in it. I actually saw his point, you know. He, he was a homeless guy. Yeah, I'm going to be true, though. He's a homeless guy that wanted a beer. I mean, he's like, okay, I, I need a beer. Why lie? You know, rather than saying he's going to go buy toothpaste, which he's not. So, you know, and, and, and people actually receive that better. Sometimes in your life, you need to understand this. Look at your circumstances and say, this is the way it is, but in Jesus, this can change. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Stop lying and patty caking God going, I'm going to try and keep God happy. God loves you. He is so in love with you. He sent Jesus, and he says, stop lying. Just be honest with God and let God change your life. That's what we need to do. Are you getting that? Yeah. Then there's the other point I thought about. You're going to die someday anyway, unless Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. Let's die bold. Mm -hmm. Let's die like a John Wayne, right? Who wants to be, I don't know, some, you know, in the old westerns, the old preachers used to have some weird-looking hat, and nobody wanted to hang around with them. Let's not just be just somebody, you know, who cares if somebody. Let's be bold. Let's be bold and take what's ours. Let's be bold. And you know what? If you say, well, pastor, what if it doesn't succeed? It doesn't matter. Step out and just do what God's called you to do. It's God that in, does the increase. You plant, you water, but God brings the increase. Amen? Amen? The farmers will go broke if they sit in there and drink tea at the kitchen table and look out all spring and go, well, there's the harvest. If they never planted the seed, in the fall they'll be regretting it. Plant your seed. The storms will come. God will see you through. God will keep working with you, and He will focus and, and, and help you get your life focused on Him. So let's step out and be bold, all right? The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Think about that for a moment. Why is it important that you don't give in to the spirit of fear? Because the fear kept those guys in the boat. The fear kept those guys, they started to pick up rocks, and they started to murmur and complain about their own leader and said, Oh, if you, had, you know, if you didn't take us out here to do battle for your God, we would still have our family now. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. How many know sometimes that's hard when you're the only person? When you're the only person. Think about that. You picture being president of the United States and having three-quarters of a country hate you. <laughs> or more. Yeah. You're the only person. And you, you've got to stay with what you believe is the right thing to do. You've got to respect people for that. And God respects you for that. But you know what? The enemy's not going to let up. He's not going to say, oh, poor you. You've had a tough go. You know, Carl, you just finished school. you got a lot going on. Oh, he's not going to stop with that. He's just going to keep hitting you like an old tidal wave. Instead, you've got to begin to say, we're not giving in to the tsunami. In Jesus' name, we're going up and over and forward in Jesus' name. We're not staying in the boat. We're climbing out to go be with Jesus. And you know what? You may sink a time or two, but I believe the anointing on the inside of you was like styrofoam, and you're going to go boop to the top. Amen? Boop. Remember as kids swimming, and you had those water wings on, you used to try and stay down? You couldn't. It would go boop to the top. All right? I was a fat kid, so I got there quicker. But the point was, you were going to come to the top. God will see you through. God will take you to the top. And so we are excited about that. Praise God. Now, in the book of Joshua, I want to look at this, the book of Joshua. We want to just uh, have a quick look here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 6. And I'm going to give you the speeded version of this. Okay? Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. 
And there's a bunch of things that I want us to first of all recognize that God told Joshua about his life. And the first part is, I'm going to tell you the end from the beginning. He told him to be bold, be courageous, and be strong. He didn't tell him to be more organized. He didn't tell him to dress better. He didn't tell him to hang around motivational speakers. He didn't tell him to whatever. He said, be bold, be strong, be courageous. Because courage is what's going to cause you to get there. In the Wizard of Oz, what was the one thing the lion lacked? Courage. Courage. Do you remember that? Do you remember the spot? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Freaked out. Because the minute something came against him, he had no courage. And he couldn't go forward. I think I got it right, didn't I? I haven't watched it since 30 years ago, probably. Cowardly, that's right. That's right. 